The question I get asked most is, Dave, I can't get it up. What should I do? I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. If you're taking insulin to help absorb nutrients and control blood sugar throughout the day, is this something you shouldn't do every day or rotate every other week? What do you recommend? No, if you're having uh, fasting blood sugar problems where you're high in the morning, you know, when you're waking up, you should stay on this. Now, if it, no, let, now a lot of times some people's blood sugar issues start when they start taking growth hormone. So for those people, they might want to just do the, the long-acting insulin while they're on the GH. If they stop growth hormone, stop the insulin, see if your blood sugars go back to normal. If, they, if you're waking up under 90 fastings without the GH, then you don't need the insulin. Insulin is a tool, and I think this is where people get it wrong. Too many people think that insulin is, is, a, is a, a muscle building steroid. Like we're going to take insulin and we're going to grow more because we're doing insulin. That's only the case if you don't have enough insulin. Okay, if your body is producing enough insulin already, taking more insulin will more than likely make you fat. And we know, we see a lot of bodybuilders out there. We know who they are. And you guys who have tried it know who you are. You take insulin and you get bloated and fat. That's all. You might get a little stronger because of all the fluid you're holding. And then there's guys who take insulin and they grow like a weed because they don't produce enough. And once you restore the right amount to their bodies, now, all of a sudden, they're absorbing their, their food at, at maximum efficiency. That was my problem. I was taking like three, four IUs of GH a day. I probably didn't produce a lot of insulin to begin with, which is why I was so lean all the time. And I was eating massive amounts of food, you know, 10, 12 times a day. God knows how many calories. Probably was, you know, eight to 10,000 calories a day I was eating. I was probably eating, you know, 1,000 grams of carbs a day at, at, at some points. And so... I couldn't produce enough insulin. To, 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 so who, I was probably running high blood sugars. I never tested my blood sugar. I didn't know. Um, my fastings were a little high, but nothing crazy. But I was young too. Uh, but as soon as I started taking uh, Humulin R, which was the regular insulin, it was like a, a, a semi-fast acting. You would get a peak initially, and then two hours later, you get another peak. I was doing that twice a day for a while I, in the off season, and I, and I was growing like a weed. And I wasn't getting fatter. I wasn't I was holding maybe a little bit of water from it, but I was growing. And, and that just told me that, you know what? I wasn't absorbing my food. And when I added it in, I, I started, you know, absorbing all my food and growing better. I had friends of mine who, who wanted to know what I did. I told them what I did. They did it and they got fat from it. So it, it, insulin is not a one size fits all. It, it really depends on what your blood sugars are how your body's responding to what's going on and evaluating on an individual by individual basis what each person needs. And if you just try to knee jerk template it all and give the same person, every person the same protocol, it's not going to work for insulin. It'll work for anabolics, but it's not going to work for insulin. For someone that has no aspirations of competing, would there be any benefit to learn and practice posing? I think that, I don't think that posing could be a bad thing for anyone. I mean, it gives you good body awareness, body control of the muscles. And think about it. When you, when you flex, okay, and you can feel yourself, you know, moving, you know, gracefully and hitting poses, you're creating a mind-muscle connection. And, you know, I, what I just did like that, I could never do that when I first started. I was very mechanical and, and, and rigid and, 
because my, my nerve pathways hadn't been built up between my brain and my muscles. And I think a guys that grow really fast sometimes have that, that coordination problem too, because there's so much muscle that the nerve pathways haven't had time to catch up. So it took me a long time to get that smooth move, you know, in, 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 in posing. And that only came with practice. And so, and I learned how to pose better when I started teaching other people how to pose because then I wasn't so preoccupied with myself. I was more interested in teaching them. And I realized that I was slowing things down and I actually understood it better. It's like sometimes if you, like when I teach my guru course, which by the way, I think I'm going to be teaching on February 24th, the next course. If you guys want to sign up, we'll, we'll have a poster up pretty soon. Um, when I teach the guru course, as soon as I'm done, all the, t- all the stuff I talked about between diet, supplementation, drugs, it all becomes like solidified again in my brain. Even though I knew it all, by repeating myself and talking about it again, it makes me know it even better. So every time I teach that course, I become even better at what I'm doing because I'm repetitively doing things. That's My son's always complaining. He's like, Mama, why do I have to write the spelling words two times? Why? Because the, the more you write the word, the, the, the better chance you are to remember how to spell the word, right? And what the word is and what it means. So we learn by repetition. I think it's. I think it would be great to, to pose and practice the poses and learn how to you know coordinate that because you're going to have a better muscle control. And then when you get on the exercises like you know leg curls or leg extensions, you're going to feel the muscle that much more. Competition coming up. Whenever I'm trying to hit the abs and thighs, my abs just look horrible genetically, even though I'm very lean. What are some variations you could recommend? For which exercise? For, for No, no, no. You, when he hits an abs and thighs, says yeah. it looks bad, I guess, I guess, genetic, you know, it just looks bad, even though he's very lean. Mm. So he wants to know, I guess, what variations you would suggest. You know, some people look better when they hit, like, like, like Bumstead looks better when he's in a vacuum on the ab pose, which is really not an ab pose. It's really a vacuum pose uh, because when, and when he locks down it, it doesn't look that impressed. It doesn't really look any better. So, you know, you got to really see what works for you. Uh, some guys like will hit it a little bit more from the side, you know, where they try to bring some obliques in. But the bottom line is that most people hit the ab pose wrong because what they do is when they hit the pose, they suck their stomach in because they're afraid it's going to stick out and not look good. And when you suck in that transverse abdominus muscles, it creases the abs and it doesn't allow the rectus muscles to kind of line up with each other because it's, it's being puckered in, it's being pulled in. So you get this like almost like in, involution look to the abs and, and everyone, and you, and you see the pictures, you're like, where the hell are my abs? Where'd they go? I don't have abs. The trick is, when you hit the ab shot to blow your air out and push the abs out, almost like you're going to the bathroom doing a Valsalva maneuver. By pushing out on the abs, it allows the, rec- the transverse abdominus muscles, which are underneath the ones that suck your stomach in, to relax. And then the rectus muscles, which are in the front, can line up in that little box-like you know, uh, configuration, which is what we're looking for. So the ab pose is a, is a relaxed pose in the sense that you're pushing the abs out, blowing out your air, letting the abs shorten on each other and, and, and line up with each other. And assuming you're in shape and there's no fat there, it's going to look good. Um, if for some reason you, 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 you know, your, your abs, you know, kind of can balloon out a little bit. Once you're in the pose, then you can pull your stomach in a little bit, but not prior to hitting the pose. Cause if you do that, the abs will never line up. And, and, and it's a very, very common mistake that people make. They don't allow the abs to, to, to contract properly and line up with each other before they start moving around. And a lot of women do that, too, because they're very self-conscious because you're always being told, suck your stomach in, suck your stomach in, don't let it hang out. Well, you can't suck it in. you got to blow out your abs first, then suck it in if you have to. So don't suck it in first. Or once again, you create that crease, and it doesn't allow the abs to line up. That's all. Once again, practice makes perfect on that. you got to get in the mirror. And you just play around with it over and over and over again. And it's unnatural to let your stomach push out because you want to say, I got to pull it in. I got to pull it in. But if you don't, if you don't let it relax it and just blow down on it and let it come out, you're never going to get the abs to line up properly. Does an hour at 140 heart rate on the elliptical burn the same amount of calories uh, as an hour of running the exact same heart rate? Uh, Holding that heart rate on the elliptical is very hard while running by comparison, in his opinion, is much easier. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to answer the question with a question. Is it more important to burn calories or is it more important to burn fat? 
Now, if you were an endurance athlete, you might say calories because you're going to be running at a higher intensity level, right? Um, if you're a bodybuilder or someone who's competing in a physique competition, which I'm sure probably 99% of the people watching this are probably physique athletes and they want to just look good, right? It's not about calories. It's about burning stored body fat. And if the intensity level is too high, okay, the body cannot generate ATP energy by, by oxidizing fat properly fast enough because fat oxidation is a slow, sustained process. When you need rapid energy quickly, your body must use carbohydrates as a fuel source. You don't produce as many ATP, but you produce it a lot faster. So if you're running, okay, you're not really using stored body fat. As a matter of fact, you can look at some female endurance athletes, and a lot of them, or look at the aerobics instructors. There's a lot of very overweight, you know, people that are doing, you know, teaching eight classes of aerobics a day. How is that possible? They're burning 20,000 calories a day, and yet they're, they're overweight. There's no way they're eating that much food, right? Well, the problem is because they're, they're not burning stored body fat. They're burning carbs as a fuel source. And in the absence of carbs, they'll burn muscle. They'll turn the muscles into, into the protein in the muscle to turn that into carbs. Um, but what invariably happens is you get these, especially these aerobics instructors that teach all day long, they're just shoveling carbs in their mouth because they're starving all the time. Because that's the only fuel source that their body can use. If you walk on a treadmill at, at, at 3.6 miles per hour, you're burning all fat because it's a, it's a slow, sustained, steady state movement. Once you get too high, once the, the intensity gets too high, fat can't be used as fuel anymore. You start using carbs. So the, the, how many calories you burn on the elliptical versus the treadmill versus is irrelevant. The calories mean nothing. It's which calories are you burning? Are you burning carb calories? You're burning fat calories. I'm assuming you want to burn fat. That means you have to stay in, 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 a, in a lower training zone, but you might have to do it a little bit longer. So instead of doing 20 minutes on, on a stepper, you might have to do 40 minutes or 35 minutes on, on, a, on a bike or a, on walking on a treadmill. But that's a big mistake a lot of people make, and they don't understand. They confuse calories with fat burning. They think the more calories I burn, the more fat I'm burning. That is not the case, and that is the problem. With, and it's, it explains right, you know, it, it's the perfect reason why you can't equate cardio with how much fat you burn, because it's what kind of calories your body is using during the fat burning process. Why do a lot of bodybuilders' nipples get so big and point downwards? Um, I'm not really sure. Is he talking about a gynecomastia? I think he's talking about gynecomastia. You know, when you get, <laughs> you get glands that are growing under the, under the surface of the nipple, they push the nipple out and then they hang. So it's almost like a woman's breast. What you're basically developing is breast tissue. So you take testosterone, you take Dianabol, whatever the case may be. These drugs aromatize, which means they convert to estrogen, some of them. And then that estrogen will stimulate the glandular tissue that we all have as men and women. And it could make your breast tissue grow. And some people that have you know, a predisposition for that um, they're going to have more, more glandular stuff going on. And then others, I know guys that didn't get any gyno ever. If those, if those guys were actually women, they'd probably be very flat chested. You know, I had, I took one shot of testosterone and I already had lumps underneath my nipples. Okay. And I had to have it removed. That's when I met Dr. Blau. So it, it's, you know, it's kind of an individualistic thing. Uh, but when you see that it's, it's because of gynecomastia. It very rarely is it, is it a fat thing. It's usually a, a glandular thing that's going on to the nipple.